Welcome to the Protectly YouTube channel. If you're into IT security or just curious about firmware, you've landed in the right spot. Today we're going to be comparing two popular system firmware options, AMI and Coreboot, specifically on the Protectly Vault. We'll be focusing on firmware vulnerabilities and how each handles security. But before we get into that, we need to explain exactly what system firmware is. Firmware is essentially permanent software programmed into the read-only memory of a computer that handles booting the system once power is turned on. You might have heard of it called by other names, such as the system BIOS. But all it really is is software on your motherboard that defines how all of the separate parts of the computer communicate with one another, such as the CPU, memory disks, and all other internal and external devices. It's the most essential part of the software in any PC, as the software is the first piece of code to run and has access to the entirety of the machine. Some of our older vaults only support the older, more traditional legacy BIOS, while many of our newer models only support UEFI, short for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, basically a more modern version of the basic input-output system that provides advantages such as support for hard drive partitions larger than 2 terabytes, support for more than 4 partitions on a drive, faster booting times, efficient power and system management, and robust reliability and fault management. Now that we know what firmware is, let's get into what AMI and Coreboot are specifically. AMI, or American Megatrends International, is one widely used BIOS vendor that's been around for decades. It's known for its comprehensive hardware compatibility and robust feature set. However, its closed source nature means that we have less visibility into its security aspects. On the other hand, Coreboot is an open source alternative that aims to provide a lightweight and secure firmware solution. Where AMI is designed to handle anything you can buy off the shelf, Coreboot is designed to initialize your specific hardware and then quickly hand over control to the operating system, like OpenSense or PFSense. Being open source, it provides more transparency and community-driven security updates, and it's a popular firmware that Protectly customers want for their vaults. Starting with AMI for our comparison, one major concern is that the more features and functionalities a firmware has, the larger the codebase becomes. This expanded codebase increases the likelihood of vulnerabilities being present. Think of AMI BIOS as a Swiss Army knife, designed for every situation imaginable. It comes with dozens of tools, scissors, bottle openers, screwdrivers, fish scalers, even if all you ever need is the knife to cut some rope. While its versatility is impressive, every unused tool is an extra point of vulnerability, a loose hinge, a weak point, or a potential for misuse. Coreboot, on the other hand, is like a custom-made survival tool. It's designed specifically for your task at hand, with exactly the features you need and nothing extra. There's no fish scaler if you're in the desert, and no corkscrew if you're scaling a mountain. This precision and simplicity reduces the chance of failure or exploitation because there's nothing unnecessary to go wrong or be used against you. Furthermore, AMI is a mostly closed source system. This means that the source code is not available for public scrutiny. Only the vendor has access to the source code and is responsible for identifying and patching vulnerabilities. This centralized control has its pros and cons. On the positive side, it can lead to a well-maintained and stable firmware environment. But on the downside, the vendor's update cycle may not always align with the discovery of new vulnerabilities. If a security flaw is identified, it could take time for a patch to be developed, tested, and distributed. During this period, systems running the affected firmware version remain vulnerable. A notable example of this is the PK fail incident from early 2024, in which the private key from AMI related to the secure boot master key, called the platform key, was publicly exposed in a data leak. The incident highlighted the critical need for robust firmware security measures to prevent such breaches. So while AMI offers a robust feature set and extensive support for different hardware, the complexity and closed source nature can introduce potential vulnerabilities. It's crucial for users to stay informed about updates and apply them promptly to mitigate the risks. Now let's look at Coreboot. One of its standout features is its transparency. Since the majority of Coreboot's source code is publicly available, anyone, whether it's security researchers, developers, or hobbyists, can review and scrutinize the code for potential vulnerabilities. I say the majority because Coreboot does contain some proprietary binary modules, controlled by Intel, also known as blobs, because they're proprietary, these blobs are not included with the distribution of the source code, primarily due to intellectual property and security concerns. The rest of Coreboot's source code is wide open, 
This openness has several advantages. First and foremost, it facilitates faster identification of security flaws. With many eyes on the code, vulnerabilities can be spotted more quickly and reported to the community. The community-driven nature of Coreboot means that when a security issue is discovered, the process of developing and deploying a fix can often be faster than in closed source systems. Coreboot also offers a high degree of customization. Users can configure Coreboot to initialize only the essential hardware components needed for their specific use case. By stripping down unnecessary features and services, Coreboot reduces the overall attack surface, which can enhance security. A smaller, more focused firmware has fewer potential entry points for attackers. The effectiveness of Coreboot in improving security depends heavily on how it's configured. Users need to be knowledgeable about how to set up Coreboot properly, as misconfigurations can inadvertently introduce new vulnerabilities. Additionally, while Coreboot's open source nature allows for extensive customization, it also means that users need to rely on the community and their own expertise to maintain and secure their firmware. So which is better? We recommend Coreboot. While AMI does offer many features and vendor support, Coreboot prioritizes transparency and community-driven security, which Protectly is a huge fan of. The smaller, purpose-built size of Coreboot allows for fewer attack vectors, making the system more secure overall. Coreboot also proves that advanced security doesn't have to be particularly expensive. It's compatible with almost all of our devices, including models such as the V1210, a 2 NIC port mini PC with a very competitive price point. And we're actively working on developing Coreboot for our newest Vault models as they're released. That being said, the Vault does support either option, giving you the flexibility to choose based on your security needs. We also offer a tool called Flashly, allowing users to flash back and forth between BIOS or UEFI and Coreboot in the field. Remember, whichever firmware you choose, keeping it updated and configured correctly is the key to maintaining security. That's it for today's comparison. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like, subscribe for more tech insights, and click the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.